What image pops into your head when I say Red Bull? If you haven't been living under a rock, then I'm certain that you all would have pictured the blue and red can and its iconic advertisement campaign, Red Bull gives you wings. But what if I tell you they have a massive marketing campaign where they spend hundreds of millions every year and it's almost unknown to the rest of the world that it is actually just a gigantic advertisement? If you guys still didn't realize what we're talking about, let's speed up and drive straight into today's video. Currently topping the charts of the F1 competition and also speculated to be the future Mercedes of the competition, the Red Bull team has definitely done something right to have won 11 out of 22 matches the previous year. Or have they? Let's dial back a little. Scuderia Ferrari, or the Prancing Horse, is the oldest surviving and most successful Formula 1 team, having competed in every world championship since 1950. Founded by Enzo Ferrari, the team has a fan base like no other and are responsible for making one of the most refined race cars on the planet. These cars are so technically advanced that they are basically spaceships on roads. No, I'm not bluffing. With an average speed of 200 km per hour, F1 is the competition of building the best race cars in the universe. Ferrari's biggest rival Mercedes is considered as the greatest team in the history of the F1 competition. With seven straight drivers titles from 2014 to 2020, eight straight connector titles from 2014 to 2021, and the home of Lewis Hamilton, who dominated the F1 competition for eight long years, both the team faced a bit of failure to the Red Bulls earlier this year. But the oddest thing is that the fans are almost happy that the Mercedes are finally falling behind. Mercedes has monopolized the competition for so long that the watchers at this point were ready to see anyone except them win just because it's different. Red Bull, currently competing as Oracle Red Bull Racing, is a Formula 1 racing team racing under an Australian license. Owned by Milton Keynes, it's one of the younger teams on the track, and unfortunately, they've not been able to live up to the legacy made by its competitors Mercedes and Ferrari. A widespread opinion is that Red Bull has a strong capacity to develop their cars, which usually allow them to have an upper hand in the second half of the season. A quick comparison to the developments introduced to the RB18 to that of the F175 proved this conspiracy entirely false, as the team which introduced the most development in their race cars for the season is Ferrari, not Red Bull. For example, if one takes into account the number of rare wing versions adopted by the two teams, Ferrari has introduced six different variants in total, including the Monza-specific one, while Red Bull has only adopted three versions, one low load, one medium load, and one high load. Each one of them accordingly were used on average for more than four races on tracks similar in terms of factors. The absurd part is that, despite all these technological advancements, Ferrari race cars are still considered one of the lowest in terms of performance. These cars are most definitely fast but not reliable. Many believe that this is the top or perhaps only reason for Ferrari's constant underachievers title for the last few years. Experts also claim that racers like Lando Norris are kept away from the podium merely due to the Ferrari cars that they're racing on. These men are no less worthy of the title than Verstappen. Put them on a Mercedes or a Red Bull and watch them race to the podium. The Ferrari cars are so dangerously bad that in July of this year's Charles Leclerc's car got into a fire in his race in Austria. I honestly don't know what's more bizarre, the fact that the car got on fire or the fact that he won anyways. The Red Bulls have been taking their research and development quite seriously. Adrian Newey has been working extensively on the thesis of ground effect aerodynamics and ensure victory to every Red Bull car on the track. The rivalries that mocked Red Bull once, that they were no more than just an energy drink company, publicly apologized for their statement and stood corrected. Even F1 champion Lewis Hamilton appreciated Adrian Newey for his groundbreaking work so far. The Milton Keynes team has also taken modular floor development extremely seriously this year. In practice, while it is easy to identify the main developments at the level of the floor, which occurred at Silverstone for the RB18 and at Paul Ricard for the F175, both teams left the central section almost untouched. This made it possible for both teams to carry out partial updates at the channels under the car and at the central part of the floor near the diffuser. This is applicable also in terms of resource optimization in association to the budget cap this year, which was increased to $140 million. It is a known fact that since the beginning of the season, Red Bull have been progressively lightening their car. The excess weight at the beginning of the campaign was about 15 kilograms. A first reduction was back when returning to Europe after the opening races, where an amount equal to about one-third of the excess weight was reduced. 
Rumors suggest that the RB18 was already at the weight limit in Hungary. The time of this happening in Hungary is not coincidental, but instead a carefully crafted plan, as this marks the beginning of the Red Bull car's dominance in the last five races. This only involved Verstappen's car, and not that of his teammate Sergio Perez. By this point, it's obvious for you to wonder, what puts the Red Bull a step above Ferrari in this competition? Is it just the bad cars and nothing else? Let's not forget that Ferrari has all the money in the world to develop the best cars on the planet, along with racers like Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz from Ferrari in the number 2 and number 4 position in the driver's charts, it's clearly not the lack of talent that's keeping them away from the podium. Then what? The answer is simple. Planning. Not the lack of it, but the existence of an ineffective one. Earlier this year, Leclerc had openly discussed his dilemmas about Ferrari's strategic move of changing from medium to hard tyres to the media. He was extremely comfortable with the medium tyres and was confused by the team's decision to switch tyres mid-season in spite of him requesting to push this off as far as possible. And if you guys assume that Leclerc's hot wheels fire incident was a one-time honest mistake by the team, get ready to be highly disappointed. The Ferrari team has been making some awfully bad strategic moves leading to several accidents, crashes and DNAs to the drivers and have continued to do so over and over again. The team isn't the one to learn from their mistakes. Instead, they ensure that they commit mistakes enough number of times to simply make sure. Unlike the Red Bulls, who are relatively quick to learn from the information presented right in front of their eyes and actually correct their mistakes. Truth be said, if one has to give a singular reason for the Red Bull's dominance over the season, then it definitely boils down to the principal strategy engineer Hannah Schmitz. F1 isn't just a game of speed and power, but also one of strategy and planning. Where most end up playing the game just on the tracks, Hannah has carefully played the bigger game of chess just right in her head. To be relaxed in such high-pressure situations is no joke, and Mrs. Schmitz has clearly cracked that nut. Today, I think Hannah, our strategist, was insanely calm. Yeah, she's very good. We're stopping dedicated after the Hungarian win. Now, to answer the question in the beginning, was it just the right planning and hard work that led to the team's success? Yes and no. Don't get me wrong, the Bulls have done everything right above and beyond their capabilities this season, along with Hannah Schmitz being the cherry on the cake, and it's clearly showing, but for them to lead with such a margin in such a short notice has more to do with Ferrari's negligence and unreliable cars. Which finally brings us to the million dollar question, will the Bulls be the next Mercedes? Personally, I don't think so. The Mercedes and Ferraris are comparatively slow learners and have definitely made enough mistakes this season for the Bulls to possibly win with an unbelievable margin this year. But never say never. Don't forget to share this video with your Formula 1 obsessed friends and I promise they will thank you later. We'll see you soon with another one.